guys, it's Emily, and today we're doing something a bit different. In half an hour, I'm going to see Milking Jay, and I thought I should take you all along with me, at least as far as you can go, and then tell you my thoughts about it afterwards, because that seems like a great idea. I've read the entire Hunger Games series, and so obviously I know what happens in Milking Jay anyway, and I want to see how they translate that into the movie. Also, it's in two parts, so I'm wondering where they split it. I think I already know where they split it, but we're gonna see. I'm going to the cinema on my own, so I'm gonna take you guys, and then I might feel less alone anyway. Why are you going on your own, Emily? All you see is a lack of people who live here anymore. I'm gonna go and be socially weird. Well, that was good. So I'm back and I've collected my thoughts and I even slept on these thoughts and yet I still think this is gonna be word vomit. So I'm gonna split this into two sections, obviously non-spoilers and spoilers. I know what I'm like. Firstly, the movie was so good. I would give it 10 out of 10, like a whole 10. So if you're thinking about seeing it, go and see it. It's fabulous. Honestly, I feel like a changed person after that film, mainly because I wanna start a revolution, but we'll get to that in a sec. Two part of films never feel finished because they're not finished, I get that they're not finished. So you never really feel completed when you've seen the first half and you can't watch the second half because they haven't filmed it or they are filming. But that being said, it is a self-contained film, as in if you had not seen The Hunger Games or Catching Fire, you'd be fine, you'd sort of pick up what happened beforehand. That's not saying you shouldn't watch those, I'm just saying you'd get it. But I do think it's a very good thing when a film can make itself self-contained even if it is in a series. I feel like the director and people who wrote out the script stuck really close to the book. The only things I, I think were missing, I might have to watch it a few more times, were the things that the first director had written out anyway. You guys will never know who Madge is. Or you might if you've read the book. So that's always wonderful to see that. I also think that you view a film differently if you know the ending. Because obviously I've read the book so I know who does dies, who doesn't die, who ends up where doing what. So I really think it's interesting seeing these characters now with the foresight I have, but at the same time I think it would be more shocking if I didn't know. I mean the director could always just change it up and be like, everyone dies. But if they stick to the books, I know what's gonna happen and that even though it's gonna be really sad, it won't be quite as shocking as when I read it in the book. We're now going into spoiler territory so I'll put a link down there to when I've stopped talking about spoilers if you do not want them. The first and the best thing I can ever think of that is a spoiler is the song that Katniss sings. It's called The Hanging Tree. It is my favourite song, song of the week, probably the song of the month and next month. And it's coming up to Christmas and this song is about suicide. And I'm just like, yeah, fave song, go me. It is a beautiful song and the editing that's done over it in the movie, I think is really great. It's, it's fantastic actually, I was cheering. Well, I wasn't. I was internally cheering because there's not many people in the cinema and it's been weird. The editing of the entire movie is wonderful saying that. The District's Revolution was probably the best bit for me because in the book you don't get that. You see it from Katniss's point of view and not anyone else's point of view. And so it was so important to me to see everybody else revolting and blowing up peacekeepers. And it was just so exciting. I was like on the edge of my seat like, yes. Particularly where they do the whole song singing and then boom. Some of you may know that Jennifer Lawrence is an amazing actress and I know that but I think seeing her during her speeches and her promotional videos it was all beautifully done and I thoroughly would have started a revolution just because she said so at that point. Talking of revolutions, I desperately want to start one. Every time I hear The Hanging Tree or probably any time I will see this movie I will want to start a revolution afterwards. And you know something? I will step outside and everyone's just going about their daily business. No revolutions to be had. The cat is the best actor or actress in the entire movie. I think the cat is called Buttercup. Whichever cat they got to act that, they know their stuff. That cat is so grumpy. As I mentioned earlier, I predicted where the end would be and I was wrong. Well, I was not wrong by a lot, but they went a bit further than I thought they would. I wanted them to end where Peter was strangling Katniss and we thought she could die. I thought they'd end it there. Katniss could die. Well, she couldn't. A bit obvious she wasn't gonna die. They went a bit further. They had Coin giving a speech and Katniss looking at Peter from a for a glass and him, I don't know, fitting on the bed. Which is definitely just as disturbing to be honest, so go them. Would you look at that? The sun's gone in and I now have a hat on. To sum up this review, I'd probably need to watch it again three more times or so, so I could give you more detailed great things because I'm still overwhelmed by the entire thing. Are you going to see Mocking Jay? Are you going to see it in the cinema? Are you going to see it when it comes out on DVD? Are you just not going to bother at all? Because I think you should. Let me know down in the comments. 
And if you're a book person, I highly recommend the books. They are awesome. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more of my face, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I shall see you guys on Thursday.